Good afternoon. And firstly, I'd like to thank the um, organizers of this uh, meeting for inviting me to take part in this session. My name is Sherwin. I'm the lead specialist nurse in one of the endocrine centers in Birmingham. And where I came from, um, it's not really that exciting as Dublin, but we do have the world famous Cadbury Center. So every time we do oral glucose tolerance tests, we don't have to worry about glucose because if we run out, we just run into Cadbury Center because they have loads and loads of glucose there. We also have the longest canal in Europe, which is the famous um, Birmingham Canal. And we also work in close collaboration with University of Birmingham in terms of our research work. So I was asked today, this is just my disclosures. I was asked today to look at the role of the endocrine nurses in the management of patients with acromegaly. But what I'd like to emphasize is what I'll be presenting is not by any means the ideal role of endocrine nurses. I'd like to present what our role are in our center. And I'm sure there are similarities in the role that you do in your centers. And there might be some differences as well. But this is how we do it at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Might not be ideal, might not be the way you do it, but I'm sure you'll find some similarities. Um, in terms of how we support patients with acromegaly, I'd like to discuss that in terms of the whole pa um, patient pathway. From before the patient is diagnosed, what do we do as endocrine nurses? At the point of diagnosis, and during the time that they're going to have a surgery, and also to look at what our role are in terms of um, the follow-up patient following surgery. Starting with the pre-diagnosis, uh, we're quite different in terms of how we do it in our center because in our patient's pathway, this is how we see patient. As soon as the patient is referred to our center, the referral is triaged by the consultant, either the endocrinologist, by the ENT surgeon, or the neurosurgeon. And depending on the severity of the patient's condition, in most cases, the patient is referred straight away to the endocrine nurse. So we are the first one that the patient see. So, and I'll go through what we do in, in our center in terms of that first referral. And after the patient sees the endocrine nurse, then we do all the investigation necessary, including referral for MRI if it is needed, and organizing other required tests. And then we discuss the patient in MDT, and then the patient is then followed up in the consultant clinic, which is a joint surgical and the endocrine clinic. And the patient then has surgery, and then the patient is followed up. If we're going to look at the first four stages here, this is the pre-diagnosis stage. And in the pre-diagnosis stage, once the peril is made and the consultant decides that the patient is suitable to be seen by the endocrine nurse, the patient is referred to the endocrine nurse-led clinic. And the patient is seen by one of the senior dedicated um, endocrine nurse clinic who is dedicated in pituitary patients. So this is what we do in our nurse clinic. We do basic history. We give basic information to patients because in most cases, patients are just told by the GP, we need to refer you to referral center. And that creates a lot of um, concern for patients because they're not given enough information. Why was I referred to your center? In most cases, when we ask the patient, do you know why you are referred to a center? The patient would tell us no. I was just told by my GP that there was a tumor found in my brain, and they don't even know what the tumor is. And for patients to be seen by someone with enough knowledge about the condition and be told that in most cases that tumor is not cancerous, is enough for them to alleviate their concerns in terms of what tumor is about. And that's what we do in our nurse-led clinic. Then we organize all the screening that's missing from that referral. Because in most cases, since we are a regional referral center, most of our referrals are coming from the GP, and they don't usually do some of the basic investigation needed to make the diagnosis. So we do all those inv investigations first. And then once the result is done, then that patient then is discussed in the MDT. We give basic information to patient, like basic information regarding the pituitary gland. We work closely with the pituitary foundation, and we get most of our information leaflets from the Pituitary Foundation. We don't reinvent the wheel. There are already good resources available within the UK, and we make the most of that. In our center as well, we give them basic information about why they are in our clinic and how long will they be seen in our clinic. So we have patient information leaflet about our clinic. And one of the key information that we provide in here is a key worker. Because one, the worst thing that you can do to patient is call them in your clinic and then in most cases, when you see them first time in the clinic, you will give mo loads of information. And in the majority of the, pa of the cases, patients won't listen to those information. And they won't think of the question until after you've seen them in the clinic. So it's important that you give an opportunity once they've gone home to be able to ask questions and to know exactly who to contact. 
And in that information leaflet, we emphasize who they can contact in our centers, if in case they got any questions prior to the next time they'll be followed up in our clinic. Our nurse-led clinic is protocolized so, so that if in case our pituitary nurse is not available, the clinic can be covered by other endocrine nurses. So they know exactly what to do if they're covering that clinic. Um, one thing that we use in our center is the holistic need assessment. And the key um, point why we're using a holistic need assessment is to identify what the main concerns of our patients are, not to make an assumption. Because you have an acromegaly, it doesn't mean that the patient is concerned about the acromegaly. So in order to make it holistic, what we do is whilst they're waiting in the waiting room, we ask them to complete a questionnaire. What concerns them the most? So you were told that you would be seen in our clinic. We need to focus on the patient's main concern. And it's quite interesting because we only have about two years worth of data on this. And we're starting to um, look into this data and hopefully we'll be able to present it in the BAS this year. But some preliminary data that we found is patients who were told that they have acromegaly are concerned about primarily about their diagnosis because there's not much information given to them by the GP or whoever referred them to our clinic. About 57% of them were very worried about the diagnosis. They don't know what the diagnosis is. Okay. Um, complications. What are the complications? 42% are slightly worried, but there is a quite significant number of them, 22%, are either very worried or worried about the complications. But also, if you're going to look at the bottom part, there are a large number of patients who are worried about the psychological effect um, of that condition. And the problem in our center is even though we are regional referral centers, we, have, we don't have direct access to psychologists. Uh, and that's one challenge for us and how we can address that issue. But also about uh, lifestyle, problem with lifestyle. Most patients coming to the clinic are worried, how come I'm not able to do things I was able to do 20 years ago? I used to go to the gym three times a week. And now in the last 10 years, I'm only able to manage to go once, once a month. So we look into this one before we then deal into the patient's condition to make sure that we individualize that consultation. Another thing as well during the initial consultation, we have what we call My Health in our center. And what My Health is about is a portal that will allow our patient to access their own medical record, either from home or from work. So that then they can look at their blood tests, they can look at their clinical records, they can look at the results of their MRI scan um, on their own. So, and we give them access to that. So everything that we do in our hospital, the patient do have access to that. Results of investigation, clinical letters, and all those sort of stuff. So that's what we do during the pre-diagnosis phase. Once we have the results, I mentioned that the patient is discussing the MDT and the patient is booked then into the consultant clinic, which is a joint um, neurosurgery and endocrine clinic. And once a decision is made for the patient to have surgery on that same consultation, the patient is then passed to the endocrine nurse. The same nurse who saw the patient during the pre-diagnosis screening. And the role of the nurse in our center during that phase is to go through the surgery in detail, what to expect during surgery, and then explain more about the complications and what will happen in the timeline when the patient will have the surgery and what will happen after the surgery. We give them, again, some more information um, regarding the surgery itself and what to expect. And also we give them information about the uh, pituitary foundation to make sure if they want to speak to anybody with the same condition, at least they can contact the uh, pituitary foundation um, and get more information from them. But again, a key point as well is making sure that you we emphasize to, to patients who to contact during that period from the time that they were diagnosed to when they're going to be having a surgery, if in case they have any questions. Once a patient has been scheduled for surgery, what do we do once a patient is admitted into the hospital for the surgery itself? So before the surgery, um, we make sure that the patient is admitted in the right ward. So every week we get a list of patients from the surgical team um, who's going to be admitted during that week uh, for um, transmural surgery or for um, um, acromegaly surgery. And because we are mainly or mostly electronic in our hospital, we're able to see patients everywhere we are in the hospital. Whether we're in clinic, we can just log in and see whether the patients have been admitted to the right um, ward or to the right area in the hospital. We phone the ward to make sure that they have a copy of our um, protocol, particularly the post-op protocol in terms of steroids cover. 
And because we can have access to the patient's prescribing system, we will be, we will be able to check whether the patient's prescribed with the right medication, particularly hydrocortisone, pre-op, intra-op, and also post-op. If not, then we contact the ward or the um, specialist registrar to make sure that the prescription is changed. Most of our nurses who that run nurse led clinic are nurse prescriber, and we can change the prescription ourselves with collaboration with a consultant as well. Once the patient had surgery, the patient is not discharged, discharged until they're seen by the endocrine specialist nurse. They have to be seen on post, um, day three post-op to make sure that they're given information regarding what to expect following surgery. We just emphasize some of the key things to expect like complications and how to address those complications. We issue them the steroids card and we advise them not to stop their uh, glucocorticoid until they're advised of the endocrine specialist nurses or until they're seen in their follow-up visit. And this is an old steroids card. I'm sure most of you are familiar that there will be a European um, steroids card that will be introduced, which we're hoping to introduce in the next few months in our center. And again, key point about who to contact if in case they have any problem following discharge from the hospital. Lastly, once a patient is discharged from the hospital, we do follow them up. And again, after discharge, the first follow-up is with the endocrine specialist nurse. That is about four to six weeks following surgery. And again, our nurse-led clinic post um, surgery is again protocolized so that anybody can call any endocrine specialist nurse can cover that clinic if in case a pituitary nurse is not available to cover that clinic. And again, we use the um, holistic needs assessment to make sure that we individualize that consultation to what matters the most to patients. After that, the endocrine specialist nurse will then make sure that the patient is given the date of their next um, clinic follow-up, that is three months post-op to, um, to be seen in the joint um, endocrine and um, surgical clinic. And depending on that, the patient is then followed up mon um, six monthly or annually. We do also run a monthly education session for patients for hydrocortisone injection teaching. Um, we do run a monthly education session for ward nurses and uh, junior doctors to make sure that we give them update regarding management of patients <coughs> with acromegaly, the importance of hydrocortisone in the ward to make sure that they are not stopped and they are not paused um, following surgery. So we do take part also in the Pituitary Foundation local group meeting um, once a month. And we do um, uh, volunteer ourselves to give update to the members of the Pituitary Foundation. But one of the key role of endocrine specialist nurses is really not the medical aspect of the follow-up visit. But what I found quite challenging is the non-clinical aspect of patients' concern. Because through the holistic need assessment that we've used, we've identified that Majority of the patients following successful surgery or successful treatment are not really that concerned about the complications, but some of them are concerned about how they get back to, to, uh, to working, how they get back finding um, um, a, real, a reliable work. I want to go back to university, but I've been off for a number of years now. So what, what support do I need to, uh, where, do, where can I get support in terms of getting back to work or getting back to university? And those are beyond our level of expertise um, because they're non-medical, they're non-nursing. And what we've developed over the years is one of the key roles of endocrine nurses is signposting. We might not be able to help, but we might be able to signpost them to the right people who will be able to help them. And what we found in, in our center, particularly at the University Hospital of Birmingham, we have what we call the Learning Hub. And the Learning Hub is a dedicated group of uh, team of people who help our patients to find job, employment, apprenticeship, or get them back into college or university. So we just refer them straight to them and at the Learning Hub look at what the requirements are. And if they're in a vacancy, they will then match the people um, within the requirements. We also signpost them within the region because within the region, there are programs that are actually available. Like for example, in Birmingham, there's what we call Talent Match. That is only available though to people between age 18 to 25. It is a lottery funded um, program that is run by individual council, wherein if patients are out of job for two years, as long as they are um, um, between 18 to 25, we can refer them to um, the talent match team and they will be able to see whether they will be able to help those people uh, either to find a job or apprenticeship. Again, the Pituitary Foundation is very, very useful. It's very active within the UK very active within Birmingham, usually patients who just want to um, 
have a chat with somebody with the same condition and look at the journey that they've been through, we, we highly recommend during each consultation to contact the, um, the Pituitary Foundation. We also organize a monthly coffee um, morning session within our center that is run by the Pituitary uh, Foundation where we invite them once a month and then patients are seen in clinic are told that the Pituitary Foundation is in the seminar room if they want to join them just for a chat or to give more advice regarding any non-medical things that they're still worried about. Within the region as well, each council will have different programs and we do tap on them heavily because even though we are regional referral centers, we don't have all the services available that the patient need. Like for example, lifestyle advice, weight loss program and things like that. But they are available within the council and all we have to do is to tap on those services and refer the patient directly outside their organization. But again, as I mentioned earlier, one thing that is really quite challenging for us is, and this is proven in several studies, it's one of the complications of acromegaly is a psychological impact to patients. In our center, even though we're a big center, we don't have access to psychologists. And what we do is usually we struggle in referring patients either locally to psychologists. But I think our Holistic needs assessment has given a, quite a, large, a big um, argument for us to be able to um, get a business case to put forward to organization of the need um, to have a psychologist to supporting our clinic. It's a big process, it still hasn't been approved, but the way uh, the demand for psychologists is going is hopefully we'll be able to get a dedicated psychologist with it on centers as a result of the holistic needs assessment that we've been using for the last 24 months. So I've given you just a brief overview of what we do in our center, but I'm sure in your individual centers, you're able to identify your roles within this plethora of role that we do in supporting patients um, with acromegaly. And most of us are involved not just in diagnosis phase, but most, some of us are involved heavily well before the patient is diagnosed in terms of liaising, acting as key worker, acting as leader, in the whole um, uh, multidisciplinary um, management approach of the patients. But key thing in our role is not just supporting the patient through the diagnosis, but also after the patient is diagnosed and the, after the patient is, has been treated. Because the problem of patients doesn't end up once they have the surgery, they continue. We know that it's a long-term condition and support of patients from us from endocrine nurses is also long-term. Thank you.